if there's any place to blend into a crowd, it's here. London's Waterloo Station, one of Europe's busiest transit hubs, outfitted with plenty of cameras to keep an eye on all those commuters. For alleged attackers, it's a bold place to hide in plain sight. Police say the two men took the train from this station to Salisbury twice, once to do research and then to carry out their attack. Police scoured 11,000 hours of video and spotted the men arriving in London on a flight from Moscow. Traveling as Alexander Petrov and Roslyn Basharov, authorities say those are likely fake names. They're seen walking through Salisbury just minutes before the attack. Then, an hour later, smiling on their way out of town and out the country. In the House of Commons, the Prime Minister described them as officers from Russia's military intelligence service, the GRU. So this was not a rogue operation. It was almost certainly also approved outside the GRU at a senior level of the Russian state. Salisbury remained cordoned off for weeks as investigators zeroed in on how the nerve agent was smeared on Sergei Skripal's front door. Now they allege it was a rigged perfume bottle with Novichok inside. It's the perfect delivery vehicle for applying the poison to the front door of the Skripals. That's our working theory. The bottle was found months later by this unsuspecting couple. Dawn Sturgis sprayed the substance on her wrists and died within days. Now the charges will further stoke tensions between the UK and Russia. And this observer sees Britain's revelations as a way to reassure allies who already sanctioned Moscow without all this evidence. If uh, London wants to keep the pressure on, wants to keep the sanctions in place, uh, then it needs to, to a certain extent, keep people feeling the, um, uh, the emotion of that. With no real hope of extradition from Russia, it's unlikely these two will ever face justice in this country. Thomas Dagg to CBC News, London. Now, on Thomas's last point there, there is one simple reason these suspects are probably home free. Russia's constitution forbids the extradition of its citizens. And for Britain, that's a familiar point of frustration. One example, in 2007, it charged Andre Lugovoy with the murder of a Russian dissident on British soil. The weapon in that case was a radioactive poison, polonium-210. When Vladimir Putin got the extradition request, his response was dismissive in the extreme. He called the British arrogant and said they had a no-brains colonial mentality. Fast forward back to today, and the response from Moscow wasn't much different. But as Chris Brown tells us, it's not just the Kremlin expressing doubt. The branded show openings with Theresa May and a radioactive sign suggest the Kremlin's TV stations were all ready to go with their rebuttals. The whole story, you could laugh at it endlessly, mocked the foreign ministry's fiery spokesperson Maria Zaharova as she zeroed in on the photos of the accused. Look at the photographs, she says. This is Bashir and here's the other guy in the same corridor at the exact same second, implying the timestamps and the photos were faked. We still keep asking them for information about their investigation, and they give us nothing, she says. They just don't want to deal with Brexit, added parliamentarian Leonid Kalishnikov, reflecting the dominant view here that an unpopular British government staged the Skripal affair as a distraction. Among the things that don't add up for many Russians, why would highly trained secret police go to so much trouble to kill a long-retired spy like Sergei Skripal and then botch the job? This investigative journalist, who's no friend of the Kremlin, has his doubts too. Eric Murtazin was jailed for a year for bad-mouthing Putin's regime. Russians could have done it, he says, but likely not the secret police. Salisbury, in a quiet town, for them it would have been easier to cut his throat and disguise it as a banal robbery rather than to use poison and put your people at risk. Commentators are also pointing out that the British labs couldn't identify where the Novichok was made. For many Russians, it all adds up to reasonable doubt that their government is responsible. Chris Brown, CBC News, Moscow.